Hey, good afternoon and welcome to this week's small video workshop diary. Uh, I still need to come up with a phrase I like for that. Uh, somebody suggested a few more minutes, um, which actually I quite like. If you like a few more minutes, uh, then say you like it. Um, if you don't like it, then say something better. Don't just be negative. Come up with a solution. Anyway, you will notice that I am coming with uh, a new format today in this video. Um, I, uh, my last apprentice is gone, um, and I decided to not uh, advertise for a replacement um, because, as I, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go it alone for a while. I, uh, as, I, um, I'm kind of going in the direction of doing more high-end builds rather than these, uh, these naked mortys. Um, you know, next year is already pretty much sold out and actually they are mainly very high-end guitars I'm making. Uh, even 2022 I have some sales for now uh, and I have some really lovely guitars, um, very high specs. And I feel like it's not really fair on the customer um, to have anybody apart from myself do any of the work. Um, even something simple like, you know, sanding or stringing the thing up. Um, yeah, I think there's a difference when uh, when you know what you're doing. And uh, imagine, I mean, imagine being an apprentice and being one or two weeks into your, your, your time here and being handed a, you know, a, a Wayfair. And uh, even being told to do something really simple, like sand it down, it's kind of a, it's stressful. You know, you can, if you make a mistake, and of course mistakes do happen. Um, so yeah, I figured I'm gonna, uh, I, I, I feel good about it. I'm. Um, but that means that we have this new format of me having the camera on a stand and uh, I'm probably going to pick it up in a minute to show you some things. Um, so anyway, that's what's happening right now. Uh, normally the apprentice would have to hold the camera and I'd, uh, and he, yeah, uh, but he is not able, not able to do that. Uh, this week, it's been a good week. It's actually been a very, very good week. I launched a, uh, a competition uh, to give away some, uh, some pickups, some custom pickups for free over on Instagram. I did a typical, you know, like, tag, comment uh, thing and uh, on a post and uh, it's had a ton of really positive feedback and uh, I think we are, I, I think it's around 3,000 entries so far, which is ridiculous. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been so exciting watching it grow and it grew really quickly. Um, and uh, I'm offering, you know, truly custom pickups. It's not, you know, you have to buy from my range of six pickups or whatever. If you have a Rickenbacker and you want me to put a Piezo in there and a overwound humbucker because you like the type of music that has a lot of high end, a glassy high end. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, anything. Uh, if you have a Strat, if you have an old Les Paul or anything you like um i'm fresh for uh, i'm fresh for it and uh uh worldwide entry you know i'll ship uh, i will pay for to get the pickups to you if you live in the north pole or or hopefully around the corner from me in denmark um uh yeah i, I doubt the winner will be in denmark uh, statistically he will be in america because uh, that's where most of the entries are or she Cool. It could be a sheet. Um, that's been great, and I've actually had uh, quite a lot of sales this week, like, and like cold sales. You know, normally a sale comes where a guy will write me a message, and you know we'll talk a little bit, and then there'll be a few more days of talking, and then you know, great. But um, because of the time zone, normally sales come in when I'm asleep. Uh, I wake up in the morning, and it's a really nice way of waking up to see like you know my phone and uh, make myself a cup of coffee and, you know, scratch my head and say, like, you know, somebody bought, uh, has ordered a, something cool. And that's been, um, it's happened three times this week where uh, that's happened. And that's really, really cool. Um, 2022 is going to be great. 2021 is going to be great. 2022 also going to be great. But I posted a thing onto Instagram yesterday uh, on my stories asking if there's anything that people wanted to know. Uh, and I, uh, you know, for this, format for me to talk about and that's what I am going to do right now so then some of the questions uh, first question my favorite beer um, Mikis asked that and actually I don't have one I don't drink I'm two year or almost two years totally sober uh, I don't think I would have the energy to drink and run more guitars at the same time um, and I'm a bit more passionate about uh, the guitars um, than I am about drinking but Guinness uh, was my favourite beer. I 
I really do love Guinness, um, and I miss it. Um, but there's just no time. There's no time for it. I, uh, yeah, I can't. Even today, I shipped three guitars today, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a cup of tea. And uh, my my greatest high now comes from 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 this. Um, so anyway, sorry, a bit boring there. How did I get into building guitars? B. Marsh Davis asked me that question. Actually, a few people asked me that question. And I, it's funny this, people ask me this a lot and I just started by doing it. I mean, so, so can you. Um, you know, I think people feel like you need to have a kind of an excuse or, or not an excuse, permission to get started. But actually I got, um, I think this, uh, this rasp, I bought this, this is that one. I haven't ever had to replace it because they stay sharp. Um, yeah, I bought this and I just kind of started hacking away at a, a, a solid body Telecaster, adding a, you know, an arm and a, and a, and a belly contour. And, um, and I carved a neck. And you would be surprised how, and if you, I mean, I would hope that you have touched a guitar quite a few times. It, it's, you'd be surprised how natural it is to carve a neck and have a good feel to it. It's not, it's not that difficult. I mean, um, so just, I just started by doing, uh, I got some wood, with this, and I hacked away at it, and I used a jigsaw, and uh, jigsaws got, get a lot of bad press in the guitar building uh, scene. And actually, I think they're, I think they're good. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I've made some really nice guitars with a jigsaw, um, doing you know the, the primary cuts. Um, so yeah, uh, just just do it. Right, next question. Types of wood. Vega 0000 asked me that question, and I'm assuming that you mean what types of wood do I like, or that's that's a really broad question. Um, I use uh, different types of wood for uh, different jobs. Um, that's hard. Vega, come back to me with a more spe specific question about types of wood. This is a fun one. Uh, top loader versus string through. Now this person, uh, Cascader Gnome, I hope that's your real name, Cascader Gnome. And I grab the camera for this. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Right. Uh, here we are. Right. Um, I got these guitars actually ready because uh, the Wayfair is for the next question. Um, see the preparation I do? I'm, I'm bloody awesome. Right, so, right. Top loader versus string through. We're talking about cut off um, Morty bridges here. Um, this is top loader. The strings are loaded through from the top. This is string through. The strings go through the back, uh, through these little six holes. They actually go all the way through the body, um, through here. Now, there are two uh, camps here, and they are vicious enemies, whether you're a string through or a top loader guy. Um, some people believe. Uh, and actually, they, they both have valid reasons for you know being better or worse. Some people believe that uh, top loader um, bridges uh, are um, a little bit better for um, letting the strings vibrate more. There is a belief um, that uh, the less of a the less tension the string has, um, you know, in both uh, the you know here and see it's a bit messy over there. Here and here, the less tension there is, which means you know, downward force here, uh, the better the string's core can vibrate. I am not sure about this, um, so maybe I'm not selling it. You know, I, I have preconceptions, and it's affecting how I'm talking about it. But that's what some people believe. Um, other people believe that uh, the string going through the body as to sustain, um, and I actually also don't believe that. But what I do believe is that. String through allows for more downward force applied to the saddles, which uh, I suppose can transfer slightly more vibration into the saddles, which can allow for a little more resonance. But what it definitely can do is it means that these saddles are much, much harder to move because there's more downward force on them than, uh, let's see if I can wiggle this one around, than these saddles. Am I going to do this? Actually, this is also very, very tight. I think. Yeah, I mean, there we go. I can move that. I am actually going to move this, um, but I don't think I can move this one. I could also be faking. You never know. You never know with me. Um, but yeah, I prefer, I mean, the cool thing with top loaders is it's a bit quicker to string up. Um, that's 
uh, yeah, that's the main reason I do this. Uh, I'm actually, I am going to put this as a string through when I ship it to the customer. Um, most guitars get a few sets of strings before I get rid of them because, yeah, I like to play the guitar before I do the final carving. Um, so yeah, that's the difference there. I actually prefer string through. I think it allows for a slightly more consistent setup. Top loader is uh, is also fine. <laughs> but I think this is a little bit better. Right, next question. I had two questions that were to do with Wayfares. Right, let me... Um, I'm going to keep holding the camera, actually. So, right, the two questions were... Um, uh, how are my Wayfares not top heavy when they are so light? And um, how do they resist feedback when they are hollow? Um, let's do the, the, the balance thing first. So, um, what I like to do is I, uh, I will match the woods really carefully. That's kind of the first thing. Um, if you have a very lightweight body wood, I will choose a very lightweight neck wood. Uh, if that is not enough, then actually I'll go for a thinner headstock. Um, some of my headstocks are very thin. Um, and if that's not enough, I will put very lightweight tuners on it. Um, if it came to happen that I had very, very lightweight tuners and uh, a very, very thin headstock, and it was still headstock heavy, I would actually put something heavy in the body. I don't know quite what I would do, but I would suggest to the customer putting a... Yeah, it's, it's never happened. I don't think it ever will happen because, of course, I... I weigh all the woods before I start working with them, so I kind of know what I'm dealing with. Um, so yeah, basically, planning. That's how I don't have uh, neck-heavy guitars. And then also, actually, they're a little bit offset. So this, the strap pin is slightly further in this direction than it would be on a normal kind of 3 3 5 star guitar. Next question. How do I manage feedback? Actually, I'm quite ha proud of how I do it. I don't particularly like the... Um, the you know uh what is it the tone block they call it tone block uh actually it's so that tone blocks are there really so you can drill holes in the body and you can put a tunematic style bridge in that's what they're there for it's not for tone um in my opinion anyway what i do is i vary the thickness of the top in uh different locations to mute vibration in certain spots so my the, this is totally hollow uh you know i can can't reach it but if I could reach it you know I'd be able to get my finger from here into this F hole there's nothing it's totally hollow the whole thing but what I do like to do is say under the bridge I'll have a um, it'll be a little bit thicker the top uh, say here it'll be much much thinner the back of the belly is extremely thin it's like uh, one mil or something uh, top here is a little bit thicker uh, and what that does is it uh, is it kind of controls vibration on the guitar's top which does uh, which actually kind of quenches feedback um, yeah it works uh, so yeah that's kind of what I do I, I play with top thicknesses adding kind of ridges in areas mainly under the bridge um, also that adds kind of strength um, which is a good thing of course and um, but yeah kind of around the top here around here around here and around here there isn't there's more mass it's still extremely light uh, I think this is uh, this base is uh, maybe I can go for you know one holding one handed there. It's not not heavy at all. Um, I think as it is right now, it's maybe two kilos. Yeah, nothing. Um, so yeah, that's how I do it. I vary thickness on the top. I'm gonna come around now for my face. I that's all the time I think I have. I'm afraid. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you found this informative, and I I'm gonna do it again where I ask questions because it's quite fun. I kind of. Yeah, and, and probably more useful than me just talking about, about gear. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. I really hope you found this enjoyable. Goodbye.